Hello YouTube, this is Terrell. Today is Saturday, August 13th, 2011. I feel a little guilty about making these religious videos and all the Ellie videos, videos and I haven't made a 9-11 video. I've got thousands of thousands of hours invested in this investigation and I need to do something. And this is the, uh, the overarching video that's going to bring the components together. I can make a hundred of these. But this is the one that's going to kind of tie things together in a what happened video. This is what happened on 9-11. Post is is, is linked in the description box. The 9-11 attacks were planned, staged, and carried out according to the Global Guardian War Games. You've got plenty of links here as a dress rehearsal. Um, becoming the backdrop for this definite inside job atrocity. My finger points the House of Rothschild and Warburg, Morgan and Rockefeller. These are banksters. These are the banksters that have had their hand in all kinds of things. Uh, terrible things. As planners, financiers, and beneficiaries of trillions and trillions of dollars appropriated from we the people during the 60-hour witness assassination that the DOD supervised, the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA, NORAD, the Joint Chiefs conspired with FEMA, the Justice Department, the New York City, the City of New York, and the Arden County Fire Department to murder innocent Americans and cover up the crime and pin their guilt upon others. That also includes Virginia State Police. That's where this guy right here, FBI Special Agent Chris Combs and Fire Chief uh, Schwartz, they manipulated the fire and firemen for 60 hours. What they did here is an atrocity. And this link is down here. I want you to look at this. I sent this complaint to the Justice Department explaining exactly how these men manipulated this fire at the Pentagon for more than 60 hours to kill. Americans responsible for tracking down the 2.3 trillion dollars. Okay, this video shows uh, Rumsfeld. He came out. If you, some of you guys might remember, he came out the day before on 9:10 and said that there was a uh, 2.3 trillion dollars missing. Well, where what happened to it? That report was never made because the people that were parked right here in this this newly renovated section of the Pentagon, they were murdered. April Gallup, I helped her. And uh, Bill Veal, I helped him draft his uh, his claims against uh, Cheney and Rumsfeld and Myers, because they realized my in my investigation that what I was telling them was true. That the Pentagon was attacked multiple times, not one time. The stand down order took down the defenses. These people have five, five anti missile silos around the Pentagon, around on each side. They have uh, phalanx uh, systems. Highly sophisticated, computer controlled. There's nothing can hit that building. Nothing can possibly hit it. I'm from a Navy family. My, my brother was on the uh, USS Iwo Jima in the 70s. Whenever they got the failing system, just like they have at the Pentagon, they've had this these weapon systems in place for a long time. Cheney's stand down order is the reason that the Pentagon was was defenseless. So my blog link is in the description box. Whole bunch of uh, information here on the app. Uh, this blog was made specifically for Bill Veal at the Center for 9 11 Justice and for April Gallup for that case. Okay, you're looking at a picture of what happened at 9 31 39. The official story says 9 38, but the clocks show the evidence. Not only that, I mean, we've got uh, the, the official reports. I want to show you the timeline if I can see it here real fast. I'm not seeing it. The FAA timeline, the terror uh, chronology, shows that this this uh, report was made by a Dulles uh, air traffic controller named O'Brien at 9:32, at the time that the Pentagon first came under attack. It actually came under attack. We know by the clock in the Navy Command Center, it stopped at 9:31:39 from the Pulse. We also know by the damage control. So I'm a contractor. My father's a contractor. We design buildings. We look at loads. When we're looking at these the, the, the damage of these columns, we're looking at centers of force here. Okay, this is what you're looking at. You're looking at an explosion that took place right here, primary. This is the one that killed the people looking for the 2.3 trillion dollars. Then you have the Navy Command Center wall right here. Well, this explosion here took place in the Navy Command Center, in the front killed people that were looking for the 2.3 trillion dollars and it killed Navy personnel. Well see this little, there's a room right here, a strong room. Navy commanders, okay, 
This is what happens. They attack the World Trade Center, 846-903. The reason is to give Navy commanders time to convene in this room right here. Navy commanders came in. They convened. They were going to launch ships from the area uh, air, aircraft carriers. These guys, they were going to launch Navy planes. Well, at 931-39, a uh, hypersonic middle, missile comes through. Boom. Boom, boom. These are bomblets. Boom, boom, boom. The reason you have a hole here is because the, the third bomblet crashed through the cross wall that's right here. It crossed through the cross wall and it blew up against the, this rear masonry wall. See, all this section is 220 feet from here to here. Uh, this section here is 330 feet over to here. Well, this is where that third bomblet went off to kill defense intelligence personnel. So what Cheney and Rumsfeld did is they led their victims into these areas. This is a death corridor. I call it the uh, Column Line 14 Death Corridor. They led people into this area that they wanted to assassinate. They led people out of this area that were their operatives. Okay, straight line. This uh, this this attack came from the south uh, west of the Pentagon on a 45 degree angle because these columns are laid out like a checkerboard at a 45 degree angle. You can stand on this corner over here and look through these columns and see this wall. This is the death corridor that Cheney and Rumsfeld designed specifically for their black operation. Okay, um, the explanations are throughout this uh, this post. You have all kinds of links here to support exactly what I'm saying here. This is another picture of the same thing. Um, Lloyd England, he's the taxi cab driver. The uh, this shows a picture of a plane, but it was actually an A3 Sky Warrior that was refitted to look like one of these one of these uh, jets. This thing flies through towards the Pentagon on a 45 degree angle. But the uh, the problem was the problem was that um, they did the the DoD people did not account for the breakaway poles. Five of these poles were broken away. Pole number one flew right into Lloyd's taxi cab. It was pulled out at 9:31:39. Four minutes and 48 seconds later, he's pulling the pole out. This guy in a white van jumps over the, the center of the median strip because the, the traffic in the northbound lane was, st was standing still. It was back to back. The southbound lane here, was the, there was no traffic because the president was supposed to land here at noon, so they closed it off. Lloyd was the last guy. I interviewed this guy. He was the last guy on this road. He, he and his partner were pulling this, this, this light pole out of his windshield whenever this plane comes north of Sitco from this side over here and strikes the Pentagon for the second time. 9.31, I'm sorry, 9.36.27. So this is a picture right here of 9.31.39. Look at this single plume of smoke going up. Single plume. This is what Lloyd saw. He was standing just on the other side of this barrier looking right directly at this. Okay. This guy in the green van jumped from over this wall because the traffic was standing still and helped him. Four minutes and 48 seconds later, you see you've got another series of clocks that are knocked out at this time, at 9.36.27. Okay, Alan, Alan and Mark, Alan Wallace and Mark Skipper, okay, they saw this, this plane coming in and they started running behind this building. They ran from this location. They were working on their fire, their fire truck. They ran away north. Then the, the missile hits, the, the, the uh, A3 Sky Warrior, the operator flew it over the into th through this cloud. The reason is because he started knocking down light poles. He thought he was going to crash the plane, so he pulled back on the joystick. He goes over. Well, he flew around in a low around to the north. He flew very low. We have lots of witnesses that saw him. Okay. Then he comes back four minutes and forty eight seconds later and crashes into the Pentagon again. Now what you have here is at column line eleven. You have a control joint. They were trying to knock down this roof. And make it look like that they had an air, a, a, air, a, a airliner in there, but it failed. This whole operation was failing. They continued to blow up because the the, the wall, the E-ring roof never fell when it was supposed to. It was attacked at 9:31:39. They they attacked it again at 9:36:27. At 9:42, they started attacking again with explosions after explosions after explosions. Finally, they got this roof to fall down at 10:15. This whole fabricated lie that's put out by the uh, Arlington County After Action Report, the 9-11 Commission Report, is all a fabrication. The facts do not agree with what they're saying. Um, not even close. The 9-11 uh, the Commission Report. The 9-11 Commission Report has the word explosions in it zero times. 
the singular term explosion is used six times. The Arlington County After Action Report, 285 pages. This thing does not contain the term explosions one time. It uses the singular term six times. The Justice Department has keyword sanitized this documentation to take out the truth. The primary uh, fire trucks that answered this call, they are not mentioned once. That's Fort Myer Rescue Engine 161 and Foam Unit 331. Those two units are not mentioned in Arden County After Action Report one time. Those are the ones that record the explosions in their logbooks. That's a deliberate cover-up. Okay, the people that are high, most responsible for what happened at the Pentagon is FBI agent spe, uh, special agent chief. I'm sorry, uh, Stephen Combs, and uh, Chris Combs. I'm sorry, and uh, James uh, Schwartz. These two guys right here. He's the AF ACFD incident commander, Chief James Schwartz. These guys are pals. Everybody had trouble getting to the Pentagon, but these guys showed up very quickly to the Pentagon. And what I have here is a radio show that I did from the archives of Freedom Slips. I hope this link still works. Um, there's a brief bio. There's a link in the description box to this. There's a brief bio on me, some of my Christian work, what woke me up. Then there's all kinds of links for your investigation. Run your own investigation about what's going on here. Then you have the top 100 things. The top 100 events with all these links. Look, they're all activated links. You can go and run your own investigation. Now, Ellie is coming. And that's one of the reasons that I haven't presented this earlier. Is I've been doing the Ellie project. The Ellen and Dwarf Star is coming for sure. That information you can get at... Uh, oh, I didn't put it on here. At the top of this link right here is... Uh, at the top of this link right here is another timeline and the events. But I will include the uh, the Emergency Coalition link too so that you can get more information on Ellie. You guys that are uh, looking up 9-11 stuff and you're not aware that there's a comet coming in with a 9-11 perigee. You see, these two stories are connected. This dwarf star that's coming in has a 9-11 perigee. Because these people knew 10 years ago. They knew before they killed John F. Kennedy that this thing was coming. The fall alignment happens on 11-22, the same day they killed John F. Kennedy. And this is more information than anybody has put together on 9-11. Uh, on Here's the topic on the Shanksville story. A lot of my work is here. It's posted all over the internet, but um, U.S. Message Board. I mean, look at this picture. This is ridiculous. Look at the picture. Empty hole. This is what the government is saying is a crashed 100 ton jetliner. You can see grass in this hole. This was part of the Diamond T excavation. They tried to find minerals here. They dug a hole. There was nothing there. There's a fellow walking here with light colored pants and a dark shirt. But you can't see any airliner. And this is the official government story of what happened. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous. But this is a picture of the hole. Look at the fire truck. This, this guy's kneeling down. You can see grass on the inclines. This hole has been here. Some of these people dumped garbage into this hole. They set it on fire and they called it a, uh, they called this an airliner uh, disaster. And there's obviously, obviously no jetliner here. Look, w what are these people doing? Their backs are turned to the hole. There's no evidence here. This guy, what's he doing? He's just standing there. What the heck is this? There's no jetliner here. Here's another picture of the empty hole. This is the excavation from the Diamond T mine that they from the cut they made. This is the hole from the missile, another Raytheon missile, Hughes Raytheon, um, was launched into here, and that's what was seen by witnesses. Okay, I mean the the 9/11 lie. I mean it's not even close to being anything that is believable, and the and the, the masses have just swallowed this stuff up. Bush and Cheney and those guys are murderers. Rumsfeld. These guys put Blackwater together. These are the guys that pushed through the continuity of government about 10 o'clock that morning so that the FEMA camp thing can go through, the RX-86, RX-84 stuff. And these are the monsters that have been in control of our government, and that's why they're lying to us about Ellie, and they're getting away with it. So I hope this can help people to wake up just a little bit to what's happening, that we can get on the same page with what's going on here. The bad guys, they're all around us, and they're in our government. And they're liars and they're murderers. And, um, I mean, God bless you, but that's the truth. I know it's hard to believe, but the things that I'm showing you here, that's the truth.